much jack it up. Put the control arm out so I can drop this magnificent item and not scratch the hell out of it. Keep it pretty. As, I, as I'm scratching the hell out of it. That's the part that is rough to find the happy medium between I want to use it and keep it pretty. Yeah. Just keep oh, yeah, it pretty by not using it. You know, <laughs> like, that's, uh, yeah, that's the, the hardest part for me, especially is I gotta. And I'm building this to beat the living crap out of it, but I still like want to take it to shows and make it, you know, presentable. Right. So I do have to find that happy. What's medium. cool is you got the patina look, so yeah, anything no. that might bug you, looks rough, it'd probably just add character. Yep, yeah, that's I tend to realize that very quickly because. You know, I scratch it, I do all that stuff. It's just part of it, so. Yeah, you're definitely right there. Oh, that's not good. Smaller bolt? Yeah, they gave me the wrong. Are you going to stick to manual steering, manual brakes? No, so this is getting a Willwood setup in terms of brakes that I cannot afford. They're incredibly <laughs> expensive. It's getting a dual caliper in the back as well for a hydro. Yeah, oh my gosh, yes. party that's bar. That has to be done. It's dude. getting a party bar, so that's... Party that's, bar. I'm only doing this once, <laughs> just put it that way. So everything's going to be like as nice as I can get it. Yeah. And then uh, it's getting electric power steering. There's a, a company called E-Power Steering that makes yeah. an electric unit that I will pretty much weld into the frame right here and the steering rod right here will go to it probably cut it and weld it into the electrical motor that you know gets welded to it right here and it's got a motor with a gear mm -hmm. and then it goes up to your steering column and it's electrically controlled so when it turns it's the motor assists so you still feel the road yeah so it, it, still is, it assists this so literally all you have to do is top off the steering rack put the inline and outline just put it back into itself and then the electric motor you know you can sense it to five which is like you can be sitting in a parking spot with mm -hmm. 10 inch wheels in the, or 10 inch wide rim in the front and just spin it with your pinky or you can yeah. go full manual and it'll be like an old truck again so it's, that's cool it's super sick so i like i mean you know a lot of people the reality is you got to upgrade your steering when you really want to race yeah, these things i, I mean you, like it's great to keep them good old boy twin i beam but nice. you gotta you gotta go with the you know crown vic or mustang two yeah or any tubular arm right because the high beams are just not for what i want to do and that's where these shocks are going that's right yeah there. yeah that bad boy's going right in there. there are you testing it on this side yeah that's the side we're doing this is the that's sock cool. strut um but yeah you can this is the backyard's custom kit this is these are all the bad ones you can see this is like my, <laughs> my first time welding on a chassis right there and then you can see the back on the step notch. It obviously got a little bit better as I went backwards. You know, the reality is too, is you want to overdo, if you will. Oh yeah. Good. Not overdo your welds, but you want to make sure that they're in there. Oh uh, yeah. They're... Sometimes beauty has to be. No, they're I think they're good, they're, man. They're, they're, it's than... not like they're ugly, but. No, they're, they're not. They're, they're not. Great. There's some spots like I had to fill a gap, so there's a right. bigger. And obviously it's rusty. Once it gets powder coated, it won't look. It's really California. Bad. I thought nothing's supposed to rust. Yeah. yeah, I know, right? Yeah, unfortunately, it's not, not the case. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, That's this awesome. is uh, everything you see here is going to be powder coated. The arms to the cradle to the, everything. There's not a single thing on this that won't be painted. And it so you can get it dirty coated. without worrying about it. No, yeah. That's. I literally have to build the truck with a body on it and everything and like fit and weld and run brake lines. We'll pretty much make the truck drivable. Yeah. And then the correct way to do it is tear it all down and get painted. So you can sucks, it doesn't it? Get, oh, it sucks. Hey, that's terrible. <laughs> I don't know why people do this. Mm. I need a different hobby. You're doing it. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I'm doing it with two cars. It's even stupider. So that's why stuff takes so long. But it's worth it. You know, at the end of the day, this will be a really cool truck. And I can be like, yeah, I built it. So it'll be there you go. super fun. It. You have so much more connection to your truck uh, oh, to yeah. your classic when you turn every bolt no i just look at this thing i mean just the frame is like kind of wacky look like you look at how i did the rear end it's just like i made those i designed those brackets myself and cut them out on a plasma table myself so it's like it's i had amazing. a friend of mine at a fab shop cut them and yeah. that's pretty much on the designs and we made them and those are like the only ones in the world so it's kind of like they're not cool they're not like right you know, right right like but, the thing, but they're like it's cool because i built it's it one off craig 909 yeah. dude yeah. so what frame year is this? I mean, it doesn't matter. They're the same from like 66 60, to like... 67 you know. to 72s are all there. Actually, yeah, 60s... They changed. 65s, yeah. first year Ivy. Yeah, 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 that's right. 65 frame 65 and a half or something crazy. Yeah, yeah. I could be wrong, but... Um, this oh, is, I'm sure this, someone will correct us. Yeah, yeah, I know. This is a 70 short bed F100 frame. Um, my buddy Chris Eisenhower, he has a really big F100 pre-runner. I mean, he's yeah. part of Terra Crew. He's got a really cool truck. Um, so he had this frame and he sold it for me for 200 bucks. Took it out of his yard, and then I put 
basically I bought these short bed frames so I can build what you see here and still have my truck bed. So I don't have to tear my truck apart for over here. You know, I come into this and it's like I scored finding this. It was super, you know, it's impossible to find a short bed frame in California. So I was lucky enough to find one and then, you know, made everything you see here without having to take my truck apart. And then when the time comes, I can pretty much lift my body up, take one chassis out, put the other one on, and then just pull it back together. So it's a little bit more expensive and but I can, you know, I don't have to rush it because my truck doesn't have to come apart until it's done. So it's mm -hmm. like I can do all the electric power steering, I can powder coat stuff, I can do more, you know, because like you can see it's still an open channel. Right. But we're doing dimple dye plates down this whole thing, so it's all be boxed in with a dimple dye plate going all the way back. So uh, for those who don't know, what are dimple dye plates? So it's a three inch hole. I yeah. think I'll do a three and a half, three inch hole. And that dimple dye basically like your cheeks, you know, it's got a little yeah. dimple that goes in. So it pretty much pushes the metal in kind of like a bowl, makes it look like a bowl but it's still got a hole in the center of it. So what that does is it triangulates the metal. It adds horizontal structure instead of just vertical structure. Right. And since you cut that hole, you have weight savings and you can use thinner material when you dimple die because a triangulated piece of like, let's say eighth inch steel is gonna be just as strong as maybe, uh, not not quite 316s, but you get what I'm trying to say, yeah, yeah. a straight piece of 316. So they're even almost in terms of And structure. it saves weight. Yeah, and it saves a lot of weight. So I can use a thinner, I'll probably box the whole thing with eighth inch. So and just, just dimple die. So it'll have these really cool, like when on roll cages when you see the gussets. Yeah. So it'll pretty much look like that all the way down the whole thing. It'll have like nice little dimple dies. And you won't see any of this when it's underneath the truck, but I'll know. And I'll yes. have photos of it and it looks cool. Like you'll see it when I take the bed part off and yeah. you can see like I'll put a plate here and one back there. That's cool. Um, that's kind of also why I did the holes here. Just to kind of tie in because there will be holes down the whole frame. Are you going to run like a Mustang rear tank or what are you going to yeah, do? Yeah, so I have LMC sells a rear tank. I heard they're junk, but I already bought it like two years ago, so it's been in my garage. So I'm going to try to use it and I might cut it up and modify it and make some sort of fuel cell out of it. But yeah, it'll have a rear mounted tank of some sort. You know, get some more weight over the rear axle. There you go. So, but yeah, pretty much everything will be as, you know, overly built as I can get it. You know, big fuel pumps, big brakes, big air. Go big or go home, man. Hell yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And I, got, I also got to weld up all these useless holes that you see on the frame. Don't do anything. <laughs> That's the greatest part. If anyone's ever built a frame, they know how much of a pain Oh, and then you got to grind. To and, weld all these. Oh, yeah, my gosh. The long process of welding and grinding all these stupid holes. But well, you got a great setup here, man. This looks like it's a good start. And Thank you. Appreciate it. Lots of us wish we had this. That's for sure. And you're making it come true, man. Yeah, it's not. I've wanted it since high school. So, I mean, it's not bad for a college student that's broke. I just, <laughs> these are every single wheel and tire is different because I just had them. Like those hey ones man, you know, yeah. Shop in high school, and these two are from the junkyard. They, awesome. These aren't even off the same car. But yeah, I just work with what I had. I haven't cool. even gotten a set of wheels yet. I like that, man. I'm not. Uh, that's cool. Yep. Designed and engineered by yours truly. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything really. That's awesome, though. So, um, those are thicker. Yeah, these are fat. Right? The normal. Yeah, so the frame's like a little, I think it's like 0 0.125, which is like just over, it's, it's just over eighth inch, I think the frame is. Um, so I end up making all the plates out of 316s. So it's, uh. Is that thinner or bigger than It's, it's thicker. That's so good, yeah. it'll, it's overlaid on top. You can see I overlaid mm -hmm. it on top of the frame. The frame's cut all the way back here. And then there, there are holes in the side of it that I overlaid and I, I think it's called like a rosebud flower mm -hmm. weld where I welded on top of the two. Yeah. Um, and then I boxed the whole thing in with 316s all the way around. And then Some I good welds, overlaid man. it again. Thank you. This is the bad one. This is my first pass. And you come to the back and that's like where I like finished. Oh, wow. I kind of like figured figured out how to weld a little now bit. Now that's, um, you arc welded that, right? Oh, uh, that's, that's a 220 MIG. Is it really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. You can see there's like a couple spots that weren't perfect. There's some gaps. So I did like three passes on this one end over here. But I mean, it's all just structure stuff. And then exactly, this is yeah. a different, the inside here is a different style of welding than the top. So it's just, I figured out very still quickly. still right? Yeah, no, nobody. I was sitting in a barn by myself when I built this. So I just, <laughs> like you can see, I try to figure it out. I mean, I'm decently happy with it. I wanted it to make it nice enough to where I could take the like panel of the bed off and show off like all right. the suspension when I'm done. Is this going to stick out of the bed? Or is it yeah, right? so I'm, a, I'm pretty much, I think this is seven inches up. So yeah. I'm going to pretty much take the whole bed floor and take the whole floor with the wheel wheels and everything and pull them up. Because I don't like the bump. I don't like the humps. So I'm just taking the whole thing and pulling it all the way up. That's but cool, man. I'll make a panel in the center here that's yeah. removable. So I can just take that one panel off so you can see the four length, the coilover mount that'll be here, 
uh, the step notch, the pan hard bar, all that other stuff. And then, as you can see with my custom shock, a <laughs> piece of half inch tubing, that's uh, it's not done. Well, you won't, <laughs> you won't have any suspension travel. No, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a little holding in place though, right? Tire. Yeah, and you can see my pinion angle's like trashed. So, <laughs> but everything's just tacked up. This was yeah, just to right. get it out of the, the place it was in. But and then I cut the bottom of the frame. You can see right here. Mm -hmm. um, and then you kind of see it better on that side too. Um, I, the frame like opens up for a shocks mm -hmm. a stock frame. So I cut the bottom of the stock frame off. Yeah, it had like that lip. Right? Yeah, and yeah. so from like here roughly to all the way to here, I put 316 straight plate mm -hmm. in and I made the bottom of the frame flat and then boxed everything in. That's um, cool. So the geometry of it's very good. You know, it's dead straight, it's perfectly even. Um, oh, rear so. disc brakes for the win. Here. Yep, yep. Five on four and a half lug spacing instead of five on five and a half. All right. So it's, more What's more stuff. common? Is it that one? This the four? four and a half is definitely more common. More, more all the cars. Options, all yeah. cars, yeah. I'm thinking about swapping out my. I mean, yeah. I'm going to stick with my nine inch, but yeah, definitely, it's definitely, wanna... definitely worth it. Um, yeah, it's cool. And then you can see it's got these massive holes on the side. These are, I don't have the tube with me, but they're open right now. So what's happening with these is a, I think it's an inch and three quarter, 120 uh -huh. wall tube goes through this, butts on and each it, side. Yeah. I rosette weld it, and then it has a structural tube going through it, and you can see through it still. It'd be really bitching. That's cool. So you can see all the way through it. It'll be hollow, but it'll have a tube in it. And it'll be just even more structurally Yeah, because then it's got some horizontal structure to it. That was That's a little cool. So I'm pretty much, this thing is so overbuilt. It's stupid. Like, hey, you know what? Really You'll be it. ready for anything. You no, know? yeah. You never know. I purposely did that because I beat the living crap out of everything I own. So I wanted eight, to make sure. 8.8, 8, right? Yep. That is out of a V897 Ford Explorer. Four-wheel drive, 5.0. Do you know what the gears are? That's 373, limited slip with the disc brakes and the five on four and a half. So it's like best bang for your buck if you're looking for a good disc brake what, rear end. What so horsepower do you think it'll, it'll handle? Um, I've been told you can put 500 horsepower behind them, but if I put 500 horsepower behind it, the way I drive, I will blow it to pieces. I can guarantee that. That's just a given. I mean, I blew a drive shaft up that was supposed to be rated for 450, and I have like 220, and I blew the, blew the thing up. That's funny. Hey, have you so. dynoed your truck engine no i want to but i'm paranoid it's going to explode something's going to blow up because the top of fourth gear is over 100 miles an hour so it's like that on the dyno the thing's going to be at the rev limiter at over 100 miles an hour it's like that's a little bit tko man that's yeah, cool I, I, I'm, I'm going to you know i think i'll, I'll man up it's 100 a pop or something isn't it I mean, yeah well no done. it's a dyno day like a full day is like 500 bucks that's but crazy. I, I really want to do it but yeah, this rear end, super cheap. I mean, everything you see here is really cheap, besides the four link. Um, yeah. That's a $250 rear end. You find those on Craigslist all the time. Go to a local pick and pull and find a V8 Explorer, the square body one. The V6s are different, I assume? Yeah. The, they don't, I don't think they have this one, but if you look on the back of it, the easy way to tell, and you can do this in a junkyard, is, uh, yeah, this tag right here, so you can kind of really see it. So it's... Yeah. Uh, this one yeah it's this one so on the bottom here it says three it says three l73 so th that tells you it's a limited slip one i think it's there's a three in there and then there's right in there there's a little tiny l and then seven three so it's a three limited slip seven three so that's, cool. that's the easy way to tell um, and 88 is the year or that it's an 8.8 8.8 is 8. 8. it's okay. the size of the ring gear okay cool so, that's awesome um yeah and then it's you know it was, they're cheap you can find them all over the place they have disc brakes out of the box you know five on four and a half lug spacing so i'm going for craig's video yeah that is so weird to say i'm gonna say that over and over that's just weird um but anyways so i'm in my f100 right now this is a 71 f100 short bed um it's got a 302 i swapped the tremec 3555 speed it's basically a tko not a t5 um so we decided to throw the dash cam in so you guys get a little bit of this different perspective if you have not seen the inside of my truck before um but yeah we're uh we're gonna go down to take some scenic shots of my truck and uh figure to take you guys along Nice truck, man. <laughs>
have died and gone to Ford Heaven. Uh, I'm out here. Sunny San Diego still on a different part. And right next to me is the Craig 909's bump. And then up next here is, we have a, I think it's a, it's a Forester truck or Forest, Forest? Yeah, it's a Forest Service truck. Forest Service truck turned uh, into a San Diego County fire truck. There you go. And it's a 1965 freaking, it's pretty solid. Oh yeah, like it used to sit inside of a garage all day. So if you look up here in the rain gutters, it's actually pretty rust free. Wow, really? And then it's out in the desert. That's so cool. So. It's really good looking, man. And then up next is uh, another 1965. Long bed, though. It's really solid. I'm not going to tell you a story on this one because uh, it might be offensive where he got it, but he saved it from somebody. What we'll a Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. Like, don't scratch my face. Craig is doing for the 